limited vocabulary is a more more tight thing. So it escapes, the event escapes one and one is and Heidegger's stuff, he takes his distance from Heidegger as always to get sucked in, pointing at deconstruction's exit. Two things of Heidegger are hovering unsaid here. One is thought as Dichten. I don't know how to translate that. How is the how is it translated in Heidegger? Huh? Dichten. Poetize. How is it? Does anyone read that stuff anymore? I don't know. Dichten. D-I-C-H-T-E-N. You decide. One is thought as Dichten, of course. Heidegger justifying himself. And the other is the ontico ontological difference. Heidegger protecting his philosophy. Derrida keeps his philosophy walled in because it is a thought through system. The event escapes and so on. The, uh, the idea of the uh, uh, textual blank I've already said. Now I would like to remind you that this comes, these two passages come at the end of the section which is ending the big first section of the book before the readings begin writing before the letter. And at the beginning of it, when he's writing in terms of his positive science, he repeats like a mantra three times without venturing up to that perilous necessity. And what are the necessities that he does not risk going up to so that he can do his system, his institute, his whatever? One of them, the first necessity, is the undoing of logocentrism. So I can't go there. I must work in terms of logocentrism, that's the first one. The second one is a meditation on the trace. He says, I can't go there, because if I meditated on the trace, I would not be able to write a history of writing, a history of the university, a history of the humanities. I can't. I'm giving it up. It's, you can see it. I mean, it's right there. I'm quoting. And the third one is, of course, the question of essence, which is also a meditation of the trace. Because if I went that far, then I would not be able to say, that writing is, and I would not be able to offer readings. But we must, we must act. Therefore, we ground ourselves in these non-venturings, knowing that we are not doing so. On the other hand, if we don't do it and simply congratulate ourselves on making these wonderful breakthroughs, then that sort of, that sort of pride is a little bit vanity, is a little, like all vanity of the human wishes, and, but also a little bit like the people who call the spirits from the vasty deep. Do they come when you do call them? So to an extent, the, uh, that, this, I want to say this particularly because this group knows it. This group knows it. They've been in the trenches. But everyone that we make enthusiastic will not know it. And it does seem to me that it, to encourage this kind of um, hanging loose, is not a good idea in the current conjuncture. It's to quote my friend, uh, my friend, and I, and I don't hear this from you folks at all. You speak, institutions speak, and I'm comfortable. And I think that's the way you're going to go, and you're going to bring people in, uh, people who do not think like you. That's the way it should be. But on the other hand, this particular idea of knowing that one is Grounding oneself in certain kinds of errors is a salutary idea. This, I mean, I'm not uh, going to go into more. There's a lot more written there, but uh, this is just in response to a request to say what passages in grammatology I'd like to read. But at any rate, the, um, it, the, the, this idea that trace and difference and all of these things, they are also thoughts, and so they bring with them, the responsibility of how a thought must move, not to be imposed on our students, that's why there's that word, uncoercive rearrangement of desire, uncoercive rearrangement of desire. When we say uncoercive, we don't know how to teach uncoercively, even the most wonderful, benevolent, sweet teaching good teaching, and I always cite Marx's third thesis on Feuerbach, as I did to you. The, uh, the, that, the structure of coercion from the one who is recognized as knowing a little more or thinking a little better is not going to go away by playing at the 60s. I've been at more teach-ins. I started teaching full-time in 1965. 
I've been at more teachings than most of you have had at meetings, not all. But it, I will say that that is not where you actually encounter a kind of spirit of undoing the power of the, of the teacher. It's th that kind of self-conscious undoing of the power of the teacher on the part of the teacher is bad faith. I cannot forget the laws whom I tremendously respect at Vassar when people were hanging from the rafters listening to the, in the 60s in his teaching. And he, I mean, Aubelé, the French word is much better here than scolds. He scolded an older guy out of house and home because he dared forgetting address Deleuze as vous. So to an extent, the, I mean, that's of course a comic example, uh, taking it to the, its extreme consequences. But nonetheless, the, the idea that the structure of power is undone by those kinds of structures of teaching is a kind of, again, empiricized utopian idea or that crowd con uh, construction can be replaced, uh, can replace democracy because it is a multitude that speaks, it is digital idealism of the most politically uninstructed sort. So it seems to me that if you are going to be, uh, going to be working in the model that you have given us, it is something that should be applauded and although you know it, it is something that I will continue to say because every rupture, as we know, is also a repetition. And the structure of the relationship between teacher and taught is not going to go away because both sides say so. So therefore, I think what I'm going to do, having spoken about as long as a launch should speak, I want to say many more things. But I think the time has come for you to address your questions, however briefly, if you want to have a question and answer, if not, that's fine too, because it's a launch. I must say that I have launched things, but only in villages. I have never been asked to launch anything in the metropole. <laughs> and so therefore, I thank you also for that particular pleasure. I don't quite know how to launch things, but I don't believe I will know. So let us consider the London Graduate School launched. Thank you.